just which information is the misinformation? Which set of doctors, which set of experts are you going to listen to? Who's to say what the facts are scattered as they are all over humanity's various perceptions as they live and move in and out of odd dreams called reality? Who's to say what's what and who gets to determine what really is for you? Human rights, things like free speech and books not yet on fire are all about trusting your gut and intuition and your own ability to review all available data, looking through the motivations of the arbitrators of that information and to come to the conclusions on your own. You determine your experts. You determine your gods or God. You determine the people you want to spend your days with. You determine the news programs you fill your home with. You determine the music you listen to, the NFTs you collect, the comedians you laugh at, the movies you go to, the dinner you have, the goose that's on your plate, the kind of pillows you sleep on at night. You determine it all except your dreams. Those are funneled in by some far off land known as the subconscious. But most everything else in life should be your decision as a free being walking the earthly plane. Just as you've been given an immune system which fights disease and sickness, as surely as a cut heals on your skin, you have been given intuition and discernment and a brain and thoughts and a heart to guide you through the barrage of so-called experts and decide for yourself the information you choose to believe as a sovereign being. Those choices should not be made for you. And when they are, particularly if they are made by people who have other motivations perhaps than just the goodness in their heart to guide the information, then it doesn't take a rocket scientist to see how healthy debate could not only lead to better decisions but also be paramount for safety in matters of our health and other serious matters such as religion and love. We have been given free will to determine the paths of our lives and no man should determine those paths for us. Yes, People can influence it, but it is your decision, your own intuition and consciousness which should determine who you listen to and who you believe in. You are equipped with immaculate radar for such things. And anyway, to remove those choices, to shut down conversation, to only allow one side of a debate, to ban certain thoughts or modalities of thinking and speaking, to burn the book, so to speak. Well, we have history to show us how dangerous that tactic is. Just how impossible it becomes to only allow those in power and with other kinds of motivation to determine the entirety of the conversation. We have history that shows what a disaster that has been in the past and how it is always ushered in in the guise of our safety and for the greater good. So ridiculous and obvious. I can hardly believe I have to state any of this at all. As if someone turned my life into a cliché of a story of a dystopian landscape or some overwritten version of the Twilight Zone, where former heroes of free thought and expression turn into zombie-like versions of, of themselves, of freedom's opposite, with faces full of rage demanding conversation be shut down, the books be burned, the oligarchs in charge of all the information and independent thought banished to the realms of ricocheting in the private dimension of your skull, never to be let out of the bone room your brain is floating in. Had this been a script thrown around a few years back, I suspect it would have been thrown back to the editing room to make it more plausible. But here we are, the Freedom Rockers all lining up like they've been cloned and reprogrammed to deliver the zombie-like message. Do as you're told, do as you're told, it's for the greater good, keep on rocking in the free world, do as you're told, do as you're told. <laughs> it's absurd, it's laughable, and yet the blue check marks on Twitter are falling over themselves, standing up for shutting us down with the same righteous aplomb they have greeted everything else in this fear campaign. Dismantle the soul of man and ushering his head, his him head first into tighter and tighter cell-like nightmares. And the ones who are doing it are playing righteous. The new world scared them, I guess, made their positions vulnerable. Neil Young is a case of ego gone ballistic. 
a lifetime of being a hero, somewhat sidelined in old age, I guess, and so the anger raged over like a hippie volcano, and the closeted dictator emerged. You will think what I think or else. It's nuts. Who's determining what information is misinformation? As if there aren't endless degrees on both sides of this equation. But only one side being punished in the extreme ways by raising their voice, highlighting the fact that their message takes extreme moral courage and really could only be motivated by a moral imperative as there is no other reward for it. And yet the risk and reality of losing everything is on them. That might be the side I trust more. In fact, it is. If you trust something else, that's fine. That is your right. You can take the information in and determine with your brain and your intuition and your heart what seems to be true. I'm not trying to take that away from you. I'm not infantilizing you and mistrusting your ability to do just that. I'm not saying only one side of the conversation can be heard. I would be very suspicious. And by very, I mean very, very, very suspicious of anyone who is shutting down the conversation, shutting information out, name calling with high degrees of emotion, and making temper tantrum like threats to shut down the open debate and dialogue. Anyone holding a lit match under a book should be looked at with great concern.